So if you purchase your new iPad, one of the first things you want to do is make sure everything is up to date. And you want to do that by going into your settings menu. And then up here, you want to go into general and under general, go to software update. And here you want to make sure that you're updated to the newest software possible. This makes sure that you get the newest features for your iPad, but also make sure that you don't have any security flaws potentially with your iCloud account. So you always want to make sure you do this first with no matter what Apple device you're using. So here we're going to update this and then we're going to go on from there. Now, one more thing regarding updates is I like to make sure that beta updates are off. Now, the thing with beta updates is if you have them enabled, you will have access to the newest features before the general layout. However, beta typically means that a lot of the features or the new features aren't refined and you might run into bugs. I like to run with a stable iPad with the most stable iOS. So I like to make sure that beta updates are off. Now, one of the new features with the iPad M2 Air is its amazing battery life, but there's another way you can extend your battery life for all of your iPads, regardless if it's the Air, the Pro or the General. To do this, you wanna go into your settings, you wanna head down into battery, and then you wanna click on battery health. And here you want to enable the 80% limit. The reason why you wanna enable this is just general information on batteries is that you never want to have it at 100% and you never want a battery to go down to 0%. By keeping it at an 80% upper limit, you are going to prolong the battery of your iPad and you're less likely to have quick drainage and quick run out. The downside to this is that, of course, you won't have 100% battery on your iPad all the time, but with the new iPad, whether it be the Air or the Pro, the battery life is already very, very good. Now, another great thing about the iPads are their cameras, especially with the iPad Pro and the iPad Air. Cameras are no longer an afterthought and you get a pretty solid sensor. But there are a few settings I like to change before using my camera for the first time. Once again, you wanna go into your settings. You wanna go down into where your camera app is. And here, the first thing I like to do is go into formats and change this to most compatible. The issue with high efficiency is, is that a lot of the files that you share across different devices, for example, an iPad to an Android, the file format won't be compatible. With most compatible, you'll ensure everything is in JPEG as well as MP4 format. So I like to change it to most compatible. I also like to change the default settings of the recording video to the highest because you can record in 4K with the iPad here and the iPad Pro. You can record up to 4K 60 FPS, that's in high efficiency mode. I like to leave it at 4K 30 FPS. You can also go to 24 FPS if you're looking for a more cinematic look. By default, it's at 1080p, and some people complain that their video quality isn't the best. It's because you haven't changed the format. Another overlooked feature within the iPad is your ability to multitask. And by default, under the multitasking and gesture setting, your multitasking is actually set to off. What you want to really do is change it either to stage manager or split view. And if you change to split view, something really cool happens. You will be now able to have multiple windows open at the same time. Now you'll notice that there are three dots at the top. All you have to do is click on the dots on any app and click on split view. Now the next time you open up another app, it will automatically glow into split view settings. So you can do two tasks at the very same time. And if you want to close any of the apps out, all you have to do is simply click on the three dots and hit close and then your app takes over. Very, 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 very functional and probably very productive, especially for students or people who like to multitask in general. Now, if you want to take your multitasking to the next level, then this is Stage Manager. Stage Manager gives you more of the iMac look to your iPad where you can resize your windows and your apps as you're using them with simply clicking on the white little arrow here at the bottom and all your other apps will come appearing on the side and you can switch between them pretty flawlessly. You can maximize them. You can either close them, maximize them with the three dots, whatever you like to do. This is just another look. I really like this look on the new iPads and I feel like this is probably the most functional way of using an iPad, especially when you're using multiple apps and switching between them very, very flawlessly and fluidly. Now, another cool tip that a lot of people don't know is that you can actually change the resolution on your iPad. 
And to do that, all you have to do is go into your settings, go into your display and brightness. And then at the bottom, you want to look for display zoom. It actually doesn't say resolution anywhere, but this is how you do it. So click on that and then you'll by default be on the default setting. If you want a higher resolution, simply click more space, hit done. And then your iPad will restart the screen immediately. And now you'll notice everything looks a little bit smaller and that's because you're using the maximum advertised resolution. And this is great, especially if you wanna watch the highest resolution videos or highest resolution pictures on your iPad. And you might as well make use of its very crisp liquid retina display. Once again, very important tip, very helpful tip that Apple doesn't really go over. And one of the coolest new things with the new iPad Air and the iPad Pro is the Apple Pencil Pro. And in order to use this Apple Pencil Pro, it's so easy. The top of your iPad actually is a magnet. And all you have to do is to connect your Apple Pencil is simply attach it as is and your Apple Pencil Pro will come up and it will be connected. And all you have to do is to make sure that it is. You go into your Bluetooth, it will say your Apple Pencil Pro is there and there actually is a dedicated setting to your Apple Pencil. Now, there are a lot of gestures and a lot of different ways of using this pencil. And the one thing that's really cool about this is that it actually has a feature to squeeze and you can, you can actually program the squeeze to whatever you would like. So a lot of compatibility and a lot of customizability with the Apple Pencil. And also there is a brief tutorial on using the Apple Pencil. So within the Apple Pencil settings, simply go to try scribble and here you'll be able to test your handwriting. You'll be able to use the delete function, select function, the insert function, as well as the join function. And there will be a tutorial going on as you do it. So it's very, very intuitive, but I recommend using this feature first to really hone in and getting used to using the Apple Pencil Pro before you start taking notes and drawing on your iPad. Now this feature has actually been around for a while, but a lot of people still don't know you can do this. Now that the iPad comes with the USB-C, transferring files between an SSD or an external hard drive between your iPad and your external hard drive is faster than ever and easier than ever. All you have to do is connect one end of the USB-C and connect the other end to your iPad via cable and you can access everything. And I'll show you how to do that. Now here, you can actually see the external hard drive as the T7, and within this, you can actually transfer files and view files from your iPad and make any modifications or edits. So if you're someone who likes to do a lot of video editing or even Photoshop, you can indeed work off an external hard drive. So you do not have to get the highest storage iPad possible now that you have access to an external SSD.